What are the strangest house rules you've seen in a person's house? Story one. Kids' parents had surveillance cameras in every room, including their kids' bedrooms. Anytime we were in a room without a parent, the surveillance camera had to be on. There were many times I'd walk into the kitchen after being in the game room or my friend's bedroom and see the TV on streaming surveillance from the room I was just in. It even streamed sound. A friend of mine got kicked out of the house because he jokingly put a napkin over one of the cameras. There was also times where if one of us said something the parents didn't like while the cameras were on, they never told us when they were turned on either, a parent would burst into the room and yell at us for saying something they didn't like. Friggin' nuts, that family. That's when you start addressing their parents as Big Brother. Story 2. My mother-in-law has some major issues. One, there is a room just as you walk in the house that is completely off-limits. It's vacuumed constantly and is a picturesque, pink frilly sitting room, pink carpets, etc. Think Dolores Umbridge. My parents brought their dog over once, who is a fantastic chill dog, and she put a paw on the carpet and my mother-in-law almost had an aneurysm. Two, when my husband was growing up, he and his two brothers had one hour of screen time a day. TV, video games, whatever one hour. Three, one bath a week. If you had more than that, you got screamed at. The brothers would end up showering at a friend's house. I had to basically train my husband out of that one. Four, if you had too much fun doing something, they wouldn't let you do it anymore. It made my husband very good at lying and also very obsessive about things he enjoyed. Or if you had too much fun on a weekend, you weren't allowed to do something fun later in the weekend, i.e. visiting a friend's house on Saturday, we weren't allowed to do anything on Sunday except clean or do yard work. Five, not allowed to argue with parents. Mom has a personality disorder and constantly lies. Dad always backs her up. She will lie about what the boys were doing and say they were breaking a rule when they weren't, and they couldn't argue. This rule is literally pinned to their wall. Six, they have to get the parents' cards for birthdays, etc., but the cards are not allowed to be handmade because it's cheap. This rule persists. Seven, have to take pictures every Sunday before going to church in the church outfits. There are hundreds of pictures of this in the same spot in the house. There are other rules I literally can't remember slash pick out of the piles of abuse. My husband and his brothers have grown up very well adjusted and sane based on this mess. I cannot fathom being a child in a house like that. The sitting room no one is allowed in is something I've seen once before, and my brain struggles to even understand the kind of person who wants that. It actually upsets me in a way I can't quite pin down. Story 3. My parents, for what it's worth, made me go to bed at 7 p.m. every night from the age of 4 until the age of 16 because I had to share a room with my kid brother. To this day, I also have to go to bed at 10 p.m. when I visit them because I have to walk through their bedroom to get to mine. It's an old house. Another weird rule they have is about bins. Most people have at least a separate bin in the kitchen and their bathroom, right? Maybe a few more all over the house just in case, right? Wrong. My parents keep just one single bin in the center of the kitchen slash dining room and the bin bag is changed once a week at the most. I think they maybe just can't be asked to go around collecting bins and so this is their god-awful solution. Having a period in that house was a barrel of laughs, let me tell you. From the ripe old age of 11, announcing to the entire house, excuse me, coming through, used sanitary pad, ready to go in the bin here, out of the way dudes. These days, as an adult when I visit, I make a huge deal out of it until they realize how awkward it is and give me a bin for the bathroom. But as a 12-year-old, this was the most embarrassing, awkward crap ever. Not to mention when we had guests round, they would be sat in the goddamn dining room and I would be forced to shamefully walk past them into the kitchen, pad in hand, to use the bin. That was some trauma right there, frick. My current house has two bins in every room. My best friend's parents did this too. You would think the mom would think about that, especially having a teenage daughter and another that just started her period in the home. Story 4. Told this one a couple weeks ago, but me and a buddy got roped into helping a cousin move. She basically sat on her fat butt all day just pointing and snorting out orders. Anyway, we were getting ready to leave, so my buddy was washing up and we were telling some of the other family bye when this bee flips. Apparently, she took the time to hang up the towels in the bathroom while we were moving, so my buddy used them to dry his hands. 
But no, you can't use those. They are decorative only. How dare he? Not only did she not even tell anyone this rule, she assumed all households were this way. She didn't even put usable towels in the bathroom yet. I'll never understand the logic of keeping stuff like that purely for decoration. Story 5. Once, when I was 8 or 9, I went to a friend's house and we were playing board games on the floor while her parents sat on the couch nearby. As I leaned over to read something, I farted. Nothing loud, nothing obnoxious. Well, Crazy Mom is like, what was that? Excuse me, what the absolute heck was that? Who did that? I'm sorry, my name, but we do not fart in this house. I'm sitting there like, oh, haha, <laughs> just waiting for her to break character and laugh or something. Nope. She then just left the room and didn't come back. Friends dad took me home later, so basically their family house rule was just not to fart. Humans fart all the time. I can't imagine how they could actually not fart. They must be in constant pain. Story 6. I lived with my grandmother and our house has two bathrooms. One bathroom is her bathroom exclusively and the other bathroom is everyone else's bathroom. If you use her bathroom, you're shunned from seeing her or being in her home for life. My cousin and her three kids, her great-grandchildren, have been banned from seeing my grandmother ever again because we completely forgot to tell my cousin's ex-husband about the bathroom rule. It's not a loss. My cousin and kids are better off without her. Straight up freaking banished. Look, I get that when it's your house, you get to make the rules. You live how you want to live. But to be so absolutely unforgiving that you would cut family out of your life for using your bathroom? I'm sorry, that's not reasonable behavior. Story 7. I babysat for a family that locked us in the house. I called my dad and he said if I felt trapped, I could throw a chair through a window and he'd cover it no question asked. Never babysat for them again. Your dad sounds like a wonderful man. Story 8. Had a babysitter when I was about 8 and my sister was 5. The rule was all day we had to sit on the stairs. No couch, no kitchen table, nothing. Literally had to stay on the stairs the whole day, which was pretty friggin' uncomfortable even to my 8-year-old body. And me and my sister were pretty well behaved, so we did it without much question. When my mom would come pick us up and start talking for what seemed like forever, of course, we would get to sit on the couch. Only years later did I realize how weird and crappy that was. Story 9. I was probably 10 or 11, stayed all night with a friend for the first time. Her family seemed normal, we had fun, got up the next morning, they're all four in the kitchen at the table eating cereal together. So wholesome. Her mom gets up, prepares a bowl for me, super nice of her. I eat it, then try to be nice in return and pour my leftover milk down the sink. Mom stops me and hands me a partially full gallon jug. No need to waste, pour it in the cereal milk jug. No. I vividly recall how nauseous I was when I realized the milk I had just consumed was recycled. Never went back. You send that woman to jail! What? No, I cannot! Story 10. I had a friend growing up who wasn't allowed to plug anything in, so basically anyone under 16 wasn't allowed to touch plugs at her house. I think we were 10 and I was definitely allowed to plug and unplug things at my own home, so this was really baffling to me. Story 11. Growing up, myself and often with other friends would do sleepovers at a buddy's house. He was a bedwetter and wore diapers to bed, but we were cool with it. Never any teasing or anything. His mother would demand that we all wear diapers to bed when sleeping over, which was odd, but it made our buddy even more uncomfortable about his situation. Poor dude would apologize constantly about the fact that we had to use them too. You and your buddy were some good friends. Very cool. Story 12. Neighbor's house for breakfast. They put powdered sugar and syrup on the table for waffles. I thought, oh yeah, I only get syrup at my house and doused the waffles with powdered sugar. I pick up the syrup. We only use one or the other at this house, the mom says. I ate dry and tasteless powdered sugar covered waffles that day. You chose poorly. Story 13. My cousins always had weird rules about which cups were acceptable to use for which beverages at their house. I cannot tell you how many times I would go to get a cup of water just to have one of them appear out of thin air beside me and scream, That's a smoothie cup! What are you doing? Or go to pour myself a cup of milk only to be berated for using a juice cup. I have brought it up to my siblings and apparently it always made them really uncomfortable too. And it's given us all some degree of anxiety about using the kitchen at other people's houses. 
is, hey, you can't drink water out of that. That's a moon cup. Listen, it's a cup, and I'll drink whatever I want out of it. No, seriously, a moon cup is, and he's drinking it. All right then, but uh, when you're done, I'm gonna need that. Story 14. Whenever I went over to a friend's house, I want ever actually allowed myself inside. Instead, we always hung out in a trailer that was parked right outside of his place, and if we needed to use a bathroom, the mother forced us to go in a bucket. My friend's mom was a huge germaphobe, so she kept bottles of hand sanitizer and a stack of napkins by the door, and you had to use them before entering the house. If you didn't, she'd close the door in your face. Also, she required anyone who wanted to pet her dog or cat, you had to brush them before and after to help diminish any harmful human toxins. Do not contaminate me with your toxins, human. Story 16. They all shared a towel after showering. Like, one towel for everyone, for one or two days. When I visited, I asked where the towels were so I could shower after the pool. They looked at me like I had two heads. Explained the towel-sharing situation because you're clean when you dry off, so it's still clean. Yeah, Mr. Friend's dad, I don't want to dry my face after you've dried your balls on it. A client of mine has three full bathrooms in their house for a family of four. They all showered in the master bathroom. Even the two teenagers who have a fully functioning shower next to their bedrooms. It's so weird to me, and it's not because they don't want to clean them. That's my job. I've met people who say that towels are clean because you're clean when you dry off. Folks, I have just so much news to tell you about human skin cells and oils and bathrooms in general. Story 17. My friend's mom wouldn't let you have a drink at the dinner table because she didn't want you to fill up on water and not finish your food. It didn't matter what it was or if you choked, no liquid until after dinner. She would also make you eat everything or she would save it for you to finish later or just wouldn't let you leave the table until you were done. Story 18. I'm a medic, so we go into people's homes every day. We had a cardiac arrest, so we were working as a man, and the wife was having a fit about the mess we were making. Yes, there was some garbage from the pads, needles, meds, but we put all of it into our jump bag. She was screaming at us about it. I told her that her husband was very sick, and we were doing everything we could to help. She said she didn't care if he died as long as we didn't make a mess. I wonder what could have possibly made the man so stressed that he had a heart attack. Story 19. I was yelled at for quickly blurting out the question to a $200 Jeopardy answer. Apparently, they played the game quietly, individually tallying scores. No problem. I was handed a pen and paper, and I played their game. I think I'm doing pretty well after Jeopardy and Double Jeopardy eyeing everyone else. I want to impress them with my vast knowledge and high score. I wager all of my money in Final Jeopardy because it's a category I'm familiar with. Back from the commercial, as soon as Trebek finished answering, they all yelled out what they thought was a question. Apparently, it's only the first person to yell out the correct answer in Final Jeopardy that his slash her wager counts. Psychos. I would have disowned them if they weren't family. Funny how this is almost the complete reverse of how normal Jeopardy is played. Story 20. This dude that managed local bands had a rule that only vegetarians could poop in his toilet. Find somewhere else to poop if you eat meat. Sink it is, then. Story 21. My friend's mother absolutely refuses to let guests pour their own drinks. Not just insisting, let me pour that for you, but will actually get mad if you do it yourself. This doesn't apply to food. Edit. I get the poisoning and drugging stuff is mostly jokes, but to be honest, she let us watch. I don't like the way you put that. That makes it sound like a kink or something, and now I hate it even more. This whole thread is making me anxious, and frankly, I'm gonna go break some rules after this. Story 22. My grandparents had a very specific order that food should be eaten. We're a big English family, and tea would be served at 5 p.m. or so after lunch at 1 p.m. Plates and dishes would be placed on the dining room table all at once, but could only be consumed in the correct order. Sandwiches first, then sausage rolls slash assorted savories, then sweet foods. It's only so strange because after my generation, 16 of us, my grandmother now couldn't give less of a crap, and all the rules are out the window, especially especially for great-grandchildren and our spouses. We're just pretty bitter that we would get such a telling off for eating a sausage roll before a sandwich, since now apparently you can have chocolate biscuits before 2 p.m. Anarchy. 
Story 23. Had a friend that had to go to bed at 7 p.m. every night because that was the bedtime for his younger siblings. He was 14. His mom would flip out if he tried to stay awake any longer. Mother Effer was seeing every single cartoon before school for sure. Story 24. I was in a foster home from ages 5 to 7. They were religious and the rules were as follows. Women couldn't cut their hair, wear short sleeves after 5 years of age, could only wear dresses and nightgowns even when swimming on vacation. And nobody could enter the home if wearing shorts. Pants were fine. The upside was the whole family ate dinner together every night and there was always dessert. As a kid coming from a home where food was not a plenty, I thought it was wonderful. I stayed in touch over the years and went to the mom's 80th birthday party last summer. Lots of people were there in shorts, so the rules have obviously been relaxed over the years. One daughter even had hair a little below her shoulders, so that rule isn't enforced either. I'm guessing they were Pentecostal. Story 25. So a few years back, I was at a party and the homeowner had a list of house rules on a chalkboard. The one that sort of made me double take was, overnight guests are asked not to masturbate. I was a little confused. I mean, nobody wants to think of somebody else jerking it in their home, in their sheets, but that seemed a little weird. Was there an incident that incited this? I'm sorry, but for the people in that home, I feel like there are two options. One, they're just paranoid about people tugging it in their beds so they make extra sure. Or two, they have somehow caught people doing this enough times to feel the need to make a rule. If that is the case, how did that come to be? Story 26. Stayed with a neighbor during a family emergency. Estranged grandparent was deathly ill far away, and parents had to make some oh-crap arrangements for childcare. Neighbor had five kids. The dad had a one-tub-of-water-for-the-family rule. This was in a bathtub with a shower, and when a normal water bill for a large family would be under $40 a month, so I still don't get why. Dad would bathe, then mom, then oldest to youngest. Guests last. The water was cold, dark with muck, and had a greasy fill of skins oh on it by my turn i was six or seven and tried to refuse but they shouted at me and i gave in i gagged the whole time seriously frick you mark you nasty butt swamp water douchebag Story 27. Went to a friend's house. Well-to-do kind of family. Straight-laced, all that crap. Dad came home and started practicing the saxophone in the front room. When I asked a question, my friend told me to shut up and that nobody is allowed to make any noise while Dad practiced saxophone. Just as this short conversation was exchanged, his dad burst through the door and told us all to shut the frick up because whispering really put him off his saxophone playing. His son slash my friend started to cry. His dad played for three more hours. We just sat in silence because this was before mobile phones and I couldn't get collected until later that afternoon. I was asked not to tell anyone else at school, but enough people had been and experienced what I'd experienced so everyone knew not to disturb this kid's dad when he's playing his saxophone. If you have kids, you've made an agreement with the world that you don't get to have hours of silence every day so you can do your hobbies. You can't put a family through that, dad and you're kind of pathetic for it. Story 28. My friend's mom was convinced that vomit corroded the pipes and could cause them to burst, so we had to go puke outside if we were sick. Story 29. She wouldn't actually let us into the house. She threw a housewarming party and we were all excited about attending, but instead she herded us all into her garage and locked us in there. There was a door in the garage that led into the kitchen that she would only unlock if someone wanted the bathroom. She would then escort the person to the toilet and stand outside the door until they were gone, take them back to the garage and lock the door again. The garage was empty as well, not even so much as a deck chair or box to sit on. The guests did not stay long. I left in under an hour and the rest not long after. She was offended after she put so much effort into having us over. You should have said a housewarming party implies we would be in the house. Story 30. When I was probably seven or so, there was a kid down the block. I think he lived with his grandparents who were weirdly strict with water. No using the hose to play in during a time of sprinklers and water balloons to beat summer heat. And I remember him saying he'd have to pay one dollar for a cup of water. They now work at Nestle trying to control all water in Africa. Story 31. My dad had a strict rule. No music with words. I'm still wondering how Beethoven's Ninth ended. Play Joe Santorini and John Five constantly for him. 
Story 32. My cousin's house when I was a kid, there was a no reading during the day rule. I was a bookish kid, terrified of my mad uncle, so I just went along with it. Story 33. My step-grandmother does not let anyone under 16, what she considers children, sit on her furniture. They have to sit on the floor. It should be noted that this rule didn't apply to her biological grandchildren. Come up behind her and whisper in her ear, When you die, we're gonna donate all your furniture to a daycare. What a rude person! Like, if that's the rule in your crappy house, that should be the rule for everyone. But to let your biological grandchildren sit on the furniture but not step-grandchildren? Hey, step-grandma, you suck. Story 34. Not sure if it counts as a house rule, but I had a good friend whose family didn't drink anything while eating meals. They were convinced drinking something right after chewing food would crack their teeth. So I've always been the only one with a beverage at dinner. Story 35. Anytime I was over at their house and we would go outside and play, I would have to knock on the door each time to come back in, even if I had been there for a while or if I had just walked in with their kid. Their mother kept tabs on exactly how much I ate or drank while I was there and expected me to work for whatever they had given me. I had accidentally left something by the door and I realized after I got a few steps away from their porch, so I just opened the door and reached in to grab it. Her mother grabbed my arm and jerked me back into the house and screamed how I was a guest at their house and that I was to always knock before entering, how I was a rude child. She didn't care that I was just there and what I grabbed was mine, etc. I'd known this woman my entire life. We lived in the same neighborhood. She knew all of my extended family and treated me like I was some stranger. That was my last day playing over there. Story 36. I once had a sleepover party at a Christian girl's house in elementary. They had random pieces of duct tape on the floor in the hallway, and if I remember correctly, we had to jump slash step over them because that's where knives were dropped. Kind of like a superstition. Except I didn't get it, and it still makes no sense to me to this day. Story 37. I grew up in Mexico. My school had a lot of exchange programs abroad, so in ninth grade, I went to Boston. I stayed with a guy from the high school and his dad. Pretty weird family, but the strangest thing was that his father told me that I could not flush pancakes in the toilet. He literally meant pancakes. It was not a euphemism because I asked his son about it, and he said, yeah, there was an incident once. There should be a subreddit dedicated to explaining why that's a rule for oddball stuff like this. Pictures, videos, etc. would be very encouraged. See, this one sounds like a pretty funny story, and I appreciate it. It also sounds like a really reasonable rule to follow. The toilet is uh, pretty low on my list of places to put pancakes, so I think I could follow this one. Story 38. I landed a summer babysitting job when I was 15 or 16 and got yelled at because I took Cheetos, Doritos, and pretzels and put them all in the same bowl. They were snack-sized bags and I'd eaten the whole bowlfuls, but there must have been crumb evidence for Sherlock Mom. She said, we don't mix our food in this house. And then she fired me soon after because she said she wasn't comfortable with me doing stuff like that around her kids. Little did she know that you were ahead of the curve and had created do-it-yourself munchies. Story 39. You are never to touch the dining table with your hands or arms, however slightly or briefly. You are to sit straight up on furniture. You will never put your feet up, sit sideways, or lay down. You will absolutely never nap on the couch. You may sleep in your bedroom at night, and that is it. I don't like visiting my aunt's house very much. Story 40. No speaking above what was essentially a whispered volume. Girlfriend's father considered loud talking, what the rest of us considered normal volume talking, to be trashy. Sounds like Milford Man. Ah, yes. You can always tell a Milford Man. Children should be neither seen nor heard. Story 41. I once had a friend's mom tell me, we sit down to pee in this house. I guess I get it, and it would have made sense other than I'm a girl. How the heck did she think I took a leak? Standing up proud and giving a stereotypical superhero stance? 